Hello students, Miss Slyman here with your notes on planes. And it's good that we're finally getting into equations of planes because we've seen them come up a few times and having the equations helps us. So hopefully you know a plane is a 2D surface. And to think of direction, we need at least two different vectors to help us think of the direction of a plane. And then we also need to know a random point on the plane because remember, vectors can be anywhere. So if I have this vector, it could also be here, above the plane, below the plane, etc. So I need a point to actually fix onto the plane. So we need two vectors on the plane and a point that we know, which then lets us come up with this equation for any point on the plane. So this vector here can be thought of as a resultant of adding these two vectors. So if we know a point on the plane, then we can add multiples of these two vectors to get to any new point. And so that's where our vector equation of the plane comes from. So if we have the vector equation of the plane, we take any random point and then add multiples of those two vectors because any multiples of those two vectors, remember these could be positive or negative, so any combination of those two will get us to any new point on the plane. So if we expand this, then we're going to get the parametric equations of the plane. So x will be the initial point plus some a1 and a scalar of b1. y is going to be the initial point our, oops, z, z naught, s a3, t b3. So there's my parametric form. So my parametric form has two different scalars, the s and the t, and the given point, and we've got two different direction vectors, the a and the b. All right, so parametric equation of the plane through the given point with those directions. So this one is going to be x is our initial point plus some scalar of the first direction vector, a different scalar of the second direction vector. And it has to be different scalars because we're not always moving at exactly the same rates if we're going to hit every point on the plane. y is going to be negative 1. There's no s value, minus t, and our z value, 2, 4s, 7t. So there's our parametric equations, and of course we would normally write these as just s and minus 2t. All right, so now we've got three points, and we want to know if this point lies on the plane. Well, to take my three points, I need to use them to make two direction vectors, and then use any one of the points to make the equation. So I'm going to first find my direction vector A, sorry, first I'll find AB, 3, 3, 2, AC. And in this case, it doesn't matter that I went from A to B and then also A to C. I could have also picked B to C. It doesn't matter. You do need to use all three vectors, or sorry, all three points to create your two vectors, but it doesn't matter which ones because any two directions I have in the plane, I can always add those up to add, find different resultants on the plane. But I'm going to use AC because it's nice and orderly. So that's going to be up 6, up 3, and I don't know, a third dimension of 0. So now the equation of my vector is going to be our initial point. I can pick any one of those points. I'm going to go with 2, 3, 4 just because. And then a scalar of one direction and a scalar of the other direction. So now I want to know if 
this point, 570 is on my line. So is there an S and a T value that would give us those three points is what I'm asking myself. So two, three S, six T, three, three S, three T, and four plus two S. So this one is the one I'm gonna to use to tell me my S. Looking at this equation, S would have to be negative two. So therefore, S is negative two. If S is negative two coming up into this equation, I would have that seven equals three minus six plus three T. Three minus six, negative three, add that over. T would have to be 10 thirds. So now I'm gonna plug in my 10 thirds and my negative two to see if it gives me five. So let's test that out. Oh, you know, sometimes I give myself space, sometimes I don't. So two plus three times 10 thirds is, oh, sorry, three times negative two is negative six. Six times 10 thirds is 20. And putting those together, 22 minus six does not equal five. So my point does not lie on the, on the plane. All right, now we wanna find the vector equation of a plane parallel to the given plane and passes through this point. So what this is implying is that negative three, two, five is not on this plane, but I have a plane that's parallel, so it's gonna have the same direction vectors, just a different point. So I'm gonna turn that first equation into back into vector mode. So R is seven, two, four, plus S, six, one, zero, plus T, three, negative one, two. So my new vector equation of the, of the plane, so this is gonna be, I'm gonna call it R parallel. Now I'm going through the point negative three, two, five, and in the same directions as the other plane. Okay, now I have vector equations of lines. So I've got two lines in a plane. Show the lines are parallel and distinct. Well, my first direction vector we will call that, uh, let's call it D1. So D1 is three, negative one, one. Direction of line two, negative six, two, negative two. Well, D2 is equal to negative two D1, therefore, line one is parallel to line two. They're distinct if they don't share all the same points. So if this point, one, four, four, is not on this line, then they must be distinct. So one, four, four, does that equal two, four, one, plus T, three, negative one, one, well, to be equal, looking at this line, t would have to be zero, but if t was zero, I would get a two and a one instead of a one and a four. So this is not equal. So lines are distinct. Distinct. Did I give my space this? Ah, still not space. Okay, so now I want a vector equation of the plane that contains both of these lines. Well, I've got two directions already from my lines, and I've got 
at least one point. So I can use either one of these points and both of these directions to make my vector equation of the plane. So this time I'm gonna say R equals, pick any one of the points, doesn't matter, one, four, four, plus S times negative six, two, ooh, this isn't gonna work because my directions are the same. So I'm still gonna use one of these directions, but now in my other, in my last direction, instead of thinking of both of these directions because they're the same, I'm gonna use the direction that goes from this point to get to this point. Because if both of these lines are on the plane, then both of these points must also be on the plane. So another direction vector is to go from this point to this point or vice versa. So that's what I'm gonna use as my third direction. So two to one is negative one, four to four is zero, and one to four is three. So there's my last direction going between the points on the line. On the lines. All right. So <clears throat> we've looked at the vector equation of planes and we've looked at the parametric equations of planes. Now we're going to look at the Cartesian equation. So we didn't it's funny that I have recall here because we didn't actually talk about this way of using the dot product with the normal of the line, although it ties in with what I was talking about with using point slope form. If I have the normal direction of the normal to a line and I dot that with the direction of the line, it has to equal zero because we know that those are going to be perpendicular. So my direction of the line is going to be any point on the line minus my given point. So if we come back and fill this in, my normal I've defined to be A, B. And then my going from my given point to a point I know, X minus the given point, Y minus the given point, that has to equal zero because we know they're going to be parallel. So that's going to give us AX plus BY. I'm just moving my negatives to the end along with the coefficients. Well, if I let all of this equal C, then I have AX. That is not very well written. AX plus BY plus C equals zero. I could have also said minus C, moved the C to the other side, it doesn't matter. But here's my Cartesian equation of a line in 2D. And remember in 3D we didn't have this for a line. Instead we had our X minus the given point over the direction equals Y minus the given point that's what we have for a line in 3D, but for a plane in 3D, we can apply this same sort of idea because if I have a plane, then I've got two vectors with two directions. When I cross those, I get a normal. So every plane has a normal. It can be anywhere in the plane, but it's always gonna be normal to the plane. So it can point up or down. So that means that my normal dotted with any point on the plane and a given point, so if I pick any random direction, that normal is going to be zero. So we can do the same sort of idea that now we can call our normal vector ABC, and we of course would get that by doing vector A crossed with vector B. And then we think about going from a point to our given point. So that vector, x minus our given x, y minus the given y, z minus the given z. If we dot those, it has to be equal to zero. So we're gonna end up with ax 
plus b y plus c z minus a x one b sorry x zero b y zero c y zero equals zero and all of this I can put together as a d so we end up with the Cartesian equation of the plane being AX plus CZ plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero. So coming back here, just for some other um, definitions, we can also call this the scalar equation because we've only got scalars multiplied here. So if you see that, we can also scalar equation. And that comes from making the dot product. And we know the dot product is scalar. So we can also think of our scalar equation as n dot r equals zero. So we're going to any point on the plane with the normal of the plane. Okay, so find the Cartesian of the, point, of the plane through this point with normal vector. What terrible notation there. Let's call our normal vector two. I shouldn't have erased it before I wrote it down. Negative two, negative one, seven. All right, and does that point lie on the plane? Well, we're gonna use our normal vector negative two, negative one, seven. I'm gonna dot that with any point on the plane with the vector from any point to a point that's on the plane. So not x naught, I know what it is this time. So x minus three, y minus negative one, is y plus one, z minus two. That has to equal zero. We're gonna end up with negative two x, negative y, plus seven z, plus six, minus one, minus 14 equals zero, negative two x, minus y, plus z, minus nine and six, not minus nine, minus 15 and six is minus nine, equals zero. So there's our Cartesian equation. Does the point three, negative one, five lie on the line? Not lie on the plane, let's see, negative, oops, negative two times three minus negative one plus, oops, I see I left off my z up there, seven times two minus nine, does that equal zero, negative six plus one plus 14, minus nine, that does equal zero. So yes, our point lies on the plane. Okay, so vector equation of the plane here, find the Cartesian equation of the plane, show that any vector in the plane is perpendicular to the normal, and show that the vector given by this is not perpendicular to the normal. So notice we've got here our point on the plane. And so if we think about the first one, we need our normal vector, which is going to be i, j, k. I'm gonna take my directions of three, negative one, one, zero, four, one, and find the cross product. Okay, I found the cross product, hopefully you did as well. Show that any vector in the plane is perpendicular to the normal. Well, any vector in the plane is going to be given by finding, uh, going from a point on the plane to any new point on the plane. So all of this is a new point on the plane. If we go from a given point on the plane to a new point, that's gonna leave us with just this bit, so any vector on the plane is going to be our, our 
how to get to that vector. So 2, 3t, 0s, 4, minus t, 4s, 1, plus t, plus s, minus a given point on the plane. So clearly, we're going to have this bit cancel. Uh, to show that we're perpendicular to the normal, if we take our remaining bit and dot it with our normal, so we had 3t minus t plus t, and then 0, 4, 1, negative 5, negative 3, 12, uh, 0, 4, 1, negative 5, negative 3, 12. If we dot this, I'm going to get negative 15t plus 3t minus 12t, sorry, minus 12s plus 12t plus 12s. Notice that everything that I've got ends up canceling. So this is always equal to zero. So any vector on the plane is always going to be perpendicular to the normal, which of course should be true. And now we've shown it. And showing that this vector is not perpendicular to the normal, well, I'm going to take this vector and dot it with the normal. So if we take 2, 4, 1, dot negative 5, negative 3, 12, we get negative 10, negative 12, plus 12 does not equal 0. Therefore, 2, 4, 1 is not perpendicular to the plane or to the normal. Yeah, to the normal. Okay, find the scalar equation of our plane through those points. So this one, you're going to want to find the normal. So you need to find the normal by doing AB crossed with AC. And then we're going to do that normal dotted with X minus any one of the points. And I'm going to leave that up to you to find that equation of the plane. And I will see you back in class. Oh, one more. Find the Cartesian equation of the plane containing our point Q and this line. Well, we know Q and we know a point on the line. That's going to give us two directions. So you can use that direction along with this direction to do the same thing as before and expand it out to find your Cartesian equation of the plane. And now I'm going to pause it. You guys check your answers with each other in class. And of course, you can always ask me. See you later.